Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this episode of Diecast Emporium Military Mondays. On this week's installment, we're going to be taking a look at one of the most versatile pieces of equipment in the U.S. arsenal. This is the Hemet, which stands for Heavy Expanded Mobility Tactical Truck. This is a 10-ton 8x8 vehicle that has been in the U.S. arsenal since the early 1980s. Now, there are many different variations of the Hemet truck, but this logistical vehicle can do a variety of different things, such as it can be a cargo truck, a tanker, it can also be a tractor truck used to pull flatbed trailers, for example, it can also be a load handling system. There's a PLS version, which is a palletized load system for loading large cargo containers, a missile launcher. There's even a tactical firefighting version that the U.S. Air Force uses very frequently. And there's also a water tender, just to name several. Now, post-military service, these are also very popular in the civilian sector as firefighting vehicles and as police tactical vehicles. So, for example, you may see these in use at uh, large fire departments as water tenders and at some police departments as SWAT tactical vehicles. Now, the Hemets are not to be confused with the Marines Logistical Vehicle System Replacement, or the LVSR, even though they kind of look similar and are both made by Oshkosh Defense. So, with the history of this knocked out, let's focus on the scale models that you're going to see in this video. I have two different versions of the variations that I mentioned previous. The first one is going to be a cargo truck, and the second one that you'll see is going to be a fuel tanker. So both of these are an HO scale or 187 scale. Uh, the first one we'll take a look at is made by Boley, which, as you guys know, unfortunately, is no longer producing models. They're out of business. Um, this is the M977 or the M977 cargo truck variation. This comes with a um, Grove material handling crane at the rear. These were very prominent in the first Gulf War specifically. You'd often find these parked next to M1 Abrams because they would offload the tank shells to be loaded, of course, into uh, the Abrams tank. And I think that's kind of what they're trying to model in the back of this truck. I'm not sure if those are supposed to be tank shells, tank rounds. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, this was part of the Walmart set that I purchased the better part of two decades ago that had a lot of the uh, Bowley military vehicles and kind of a brown, black, and silver camouflage that I have since repainted recently. But the uh, the truck looks very good, as you can see. It has some spare tires up ahead. Uh, the material handling crane that is movable. You can see that it has a screw here at the back that you can just undo. You can kind of see the original color that brownish that I didn't really bother painting underneath of it, uh, that's the that's the base color that this once was. Obviously, it has since been recolored or resprayed in the Tamiya TS-46 light sand that I use for most of my vehicles in the military collection. So that's the first Hemet that we'll take a look at. And again, the M977 is the base model uh, uh, for all the Hemets. This is really one of the most popular ones that you'll see. Second one that we'll take a look at is an the Olive Drab paint scheme, and this is made by Rocco Mini Tanks. This is the M978 fuel tanker. So the fuel tanker variation has a 9,500 liter capacity tanker, and obviously, as I mentioned before, it can hold water or different types of fuel. This has a little nozzle on it, access stairs, mirrors and such that I haven't added to it. A lot of different components that you can put on this um, model. It, the, the base piece comes assembled, but the different detail aspects you have to assemble on this truck once you get it. It does come in this color, so I left it that way. I haven't really decided if I'm going to uh, paint it tan or, or, you know, the desert tan color like I have all of the other stuff. I really like the way that this looks, and my current hobby shop has literally like six of these on the shelf. So I don't know. One of these days when I strike it rich, I might buy all six of them, but they're kind of expensive, so I'm happy with just a variation of one of these. Uh, as I said before, um, the, the Hemets, they have several different other variations, such as the PLS palletized loading system. I'd like to pick up one of those. Uh, I actually think Matchbox 
when they were doing the real working rigs, they made a model of that, and it's pretty close to 187 scale. I don't think they ever made a tan one. I know they made a, desert, a uh, jungle camouflage one, and then they did some other crazy colors that don't really match. Uh, but if I ever come across one of those, I might want to pick them up. As for the tractor units, I think I want to track one of those down because I could use it with the trailer that you guys have probably seen in one of the other Military Mondays videos. And possibly I might pick up one of the missile launchers because those are cool looking as well. We'll take a better look at this model because it's really worth looking at. Hopefully this will come across on camera. I want you guys to look at the sidewall of the tires. I'm trying to get this to zoom in. There's name branding on the sidewalls. You can see Michelin. So even in 187 scale, Rocco Mini Tanks actually got this to come across. And it really, really looks good. You can see on the door where those two holes are, that's where a uh, grab rail goes. That's included. I just haven't put it on. There's mirrors that go on here. On the front, you can see the Oshkosh logo. So this is really one of the first generation Hammets from the early uh, 80s into the early 90s. It doesn't have the up-armored designer on the cab. As the ladder pops off there, that's okay. That actually is a good thing because you can see where it goes in on the back. Here is the um, hitch. You can put a hitch on the back that's included. I don't remember what goes here. Something goes here, but I don't remember what it is. On the back, or on the right-hand side, I should say, there's a spare tire. Again, I believe this is supposed to be some sort of a nozzle. And then, once again, that leads us towards the front of the truck. So, that will conclude this week's episode of Diecast Emporium Military Mondays. Certainly not the most, shall we use the term, BA vehicle in the U.S. military but definitely one of the most important. Again, kind of like the deuce and a half or the five-ton trucks, you can't have a modern military without having these logistical trucks around. At least you're not going to get very far unless you have these around. So if you're modeling a National Guard armory or a military base of any kind on your modern layout, or if you want a military train and have a bunch of these vehicles on a flat car, don't leave out a few Hemets. You're going to want to have those for sure. As I mentioned before, the water tanker is by Rocco Mini Tanks. You can still find those on the internet. The M977 cargo truck, this one, the tan one with the crane, that's made by Bully. You can also still find those on eBay. They're not too terribly expensive, uh, but the issue you run into is the fact that when they were new and you can find them in any hobby shop back in the early to mid-2000s, mid they were like $2.99 each, and now you're going to be paying $15-$20. Bucks. It just kind of, well, let's be honest, it just sucks. But inflation tends to do that. As always, I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave your comments down in the comment section below. By the way, if there is a military vehicle, particularly um, a land vehicle, for lack of a better term, that you would like to see that I haven't done yet, please leave it down in the comment section below. You never know. I just might have it or I can get it, and I'd be happy to do a Military Mondays episode on that. Take care. Be well. I'll see you in the next review.